<laughs> Good morning, friends. Diana, you're from Garden Love. Today is my birthday, March 10, and I, what I wanted to do today for my birthday is plant at least one tree in the ground. So I went ahead and grabbed all the most important things that I need to install a tree here at my homestead. Some gravel, sure star that's in here from AB Stone, some amazing all-purpose fertilizer from Ivy Organic. I'm going to be mixing the native soil with AB Stone Citrus and Palm. You guys know I love this soil. So I'm going to give that a try. Some gravel in the tree that I'm going to be putting in here today. My shovel and my handsome husband who's going to be helping me. And I'm going to be putting in the Satsuma. You guys are all very familiar with this tree. It's had quite a journey. I put it in the ground in my previous house and I couldn't bear leaving it. So I pulled it out and brought it home with me. And look at that. This is a very um, easy tree to grow. If you guys are starting to grow fruits either in the ground or in containers, I highly recommend this tree. It's an easy grower. And as you can see, it's been two years and it's given me fruit already. So let's go ahead and install it. So I went ahead and got myself a new tool to dig this hole deeper and I gotta say it does work So uh, if I suggest that you guys get something like this if you guys are struggling to digging up a hole Another thing I want to say that definitely helped tremendously today is that it rained last night When I was a kid it used to rain almost every time my birthday came up and I would be upset because I couldn't enjoy the sunshine of the day and go outside I had to be indoors and now today I woke up and realized that um, I'm so happy that it rained last night so it rained for a purpose I was able to come out here and dig up the soil fairly easy with this tool and it helped because the soil was moist from the weather last night so that was the uh, nature's gift to me on um, my birthday so I'm gonna I'm gonna dig a little bit of the soil got another shovel to get this so this loose soil out and then I'm gonna start oh Sorry guys, moving all this stuff over here took a, took all the energy off, uh, took the energy from me. Anyways, let's go back to what I was saying. So I'm gonna grab this shovel and dig up all the soil that's in here left. It's going, it's cut, it's loose, so basically I just have to get it out. And I brought this tarp over here because I'm going to mix some of the soil that that I am putting from Baby Stone Citrus and Palm. And I'm gonna mix it in with this soil right here so it can be mixed with the native soil. There's the hole. Oh. <laughs> There's not that much. I just wanna go ahead and leave a good base because I'm going to add some gravel to the base so in case it gets waterlogged. I can, it won't be sitting in water. Alright, I think that's pretty good. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we brought some gravel. This is gonna help with the water and the drainage. You guys know the citrus don't like to sit in water. So we're going to add gravel to the bottom of it. But it's true just in case. I don't know if you guys can see from there. that I just took out and mixed it with the EV stone soil. So the nice thing about 
about using a tarp is that I'm not going to get all the leaves on the ground, at least not all of them. And then when it's done, or it's done, just lift it and throw it on in there. So I'm starting to learn that a tarp is one of the gardener's best friends because you can do so much with it. So now that this is kind of mixed in, I want to make sure it has a good base. going to put this cage I built but when I built this it was brought to my attention for, by you guys that you guys think some of the roots won't be able to access this so what I'm going to do is make a few little holes just so it's a little bigger for some of the roots to get through and I thought that was an amazing point I appreciate you guys giving me feedback and I'll show you guys in a second how this is going to look. It's going to be just big enough for any of the big roots to go through, but small enough for any gophers not to go through. And I'm going to leave this little pokey thing poking out so that way if any gophers tries to get in, you'll pretty much get poked and hopefully discouraged from trying to get in. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing this. Can you guys see that? I'll show you guys right here. Let's do one over here. Just basically cutting it in a square and the one that's left, I'm going to lift it and hopefully it's something that can poke a gopher or as you guys can see i've spent a few minutes mixing in the soil that it originally was in with the native soil and i didn't want to bore you so i paused the video for a second okay i think this tree is going to love this new soil look at that it's beautiful all right now that we're done with that Let's move on with some shirt star. You guys know I use shirt star for about every single transplant. I've had great success with it. This is it. I highly recommend it. I'm going to, it comes in a cardboard box. So I use this, recycle this container. This something else I was holding in there. hold my stuff in containers so there we go let's get this I better hurry before it starts to rain That's where it's gonna go. Let me use by the way, I got this at the 99 cent store for like two dollars. Perfect. Alright, so let me go ahead and add the rest of the soil. You guys see that?
right, friends, now that we have that done, we have to fill backfill all of this. So what I'm going to do is use the same soil that I dug up. But I'm going to add some of the EB stone, citrus and palm. I'm going to try my best to mix the native soil, the EB stone soil that I brought, and the soil that was in the container. That way this tree can go on to a great start. I do want to point out that as you can see, my satsuma tree has a handful of fruit. You gotta keep in mind that this tree did not have a huge root ball to sustain all this fruit and handle the transplant. So if you're in a similar situation where you're transplanting a tree and your tree has a handful of fruit, I highly recommend that you remove the fruit, which I will be doing at the end of this transplant. It's very important that you don't skip this step. By removing the fruit, this will allow your tree to focus on its root ball and the new leaves that it's about to start coming out here in the spring in just a few weeks. And if you're anything like me, I know this is going to be hard to do, but you are going to be setting up your tree for success, not to mention that you have an opportunity to taste that amazing, organic, delicious fruit that you will be harvesting from your tree. Another thing I want to point out, as you can see, you can still see part of the cage that I made for the gophers not to get through to my root ball of my tree. You want to make sure that that cage is not completely dug under the soil. You want it to be just a few centimeters under the soil, if any. It could actually be exposed because this will prevent the gophers to go up and over the cage into the little basket that you have created for your root ball. All right, friends, it's starting to rain. Oh my God. So I'm pretty much done. The only thing I want to make sure that I tell you guys while I'm here is that you don't allow your tree to get dug. Your roots have to be mildly exposed. So make sure that you don't dig them too much. Okay, you want to be able to see some of this trunk. We're all set, guys. Last thing that's super important is give it a good fertilizer. I love using Ivy Organics fertilizer because it has a little bit of everything your plant needs to get established. I'm gonna give it a little bit of shake right here. With the rain, it's gonna help mix it in. And then, most important guys, add your mulch. Me, I have tons of leaves here. I'm just gonna add these leaves. Well friends, as you've seen, the rain started coming down pretty hard and I gotta say that now I don't have to do the last step that I do once I transplant a tree in the ground or in a container, which is watering your plant. Make sure that you water it very deeply, that way your roots have full contact with the new soil that you transplanted into. Since the rain came in pretty hard, I will have to skip this step but I do want to make sure that you guys don't skip it and you guys make sure to give it a deep watering and to come often after you transplant it. Every single day after you transplant it, I would suggest that you give it a little watering because you want to have those roots contact with the soil. And then I would do it for maybe about a week. After that, I would slow down. I think by then your tree will have um, you know, a good establishment with the new soil. Now, as you can see here, I have 25 new yards cubic yards of soil for my project that I'm working and we're trying our best to cover it up I don't think you can see the scale of how much soil this is but this tarp is 17 by 20 feet and as you can see it's not covering most of the soil but we did try our best we got some rocks and I even tried to get another tarp to help cover the other side well, guys, I'm really happy that you guys stayed tuned. You guys got to see us struggle here a little bit. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this. Go ahead and hit that notification button so you can get notified as soon as my videos are released. And give me some thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed this video. 
Well, guys, like always, I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.